Yeah, so can you take anything positive away from Arkansas? Because what I saw in that game was a team that got dominated on both sides of the line of scrimmage. You know, we outlined you can't run it, you can't defend the run, and bottom five in the nation in both categories, and that's with playing Georgia State. We talked to you last week about the concerns that you can't push around uh, uh, a group of five team, and then Arkansas, obviously, that you know there was a puncher's chance there in the fourth quarter with a big comeback and a couple of Spencer Rattler touchdowns and and you know but it was really never uh, a competitive game after it got past 21 16 but uh yeah yeah, pop, yeah I mean I, I was gonna, play. that's the big concern yeah you know line of scrimmage play is, is it's you know Mark I look at this football team and I, I don't think this is a harsh way of putting this and it's not even really meant as an insult I guess it's something that we should have known like no duh this was going to be the case this feels like the same exact football team as last year, just with a better quarterback. You, you know, in the sense of that, a lot of your same issues you were facing last year, again, you're facing this year. And, and so why, I, you know, I, and I don't know why we didn't see that coming more so, I guess, or why Gamecock Nation as a whole, I guess a lot of folks, you know, blinded by their garnet and black glasses, if you will. But uh, same five offensive linemen, a lot of the same guys up front defensively. Line of scrimmage struggled last year, right? This isn't rocket science. I mean, it, it's just the transitive property and carrying over. Uh, but positives from Arkansas, I think certainly there were positives. Uh, having some offensive success, seeing a guy like Antoine Wells break through, I think it was eight catches for 189 yards. He looks to be the part, looks as good as advertised, the transfer from James Madison, and certainly a guy you know that you hope is going to be a go-to dude week in, week out. Um, so just seeing this football team have offensive success in the passing game, you know, Spencer Rattler, while he did not play perfect, if there's anybody out there who thinks he's not the best option for this football team under center, just throw you in the loony bin and, and, and get rid of the key. I mean, that's kind of the way I look at it. So, um, you know, I, I think positives on the offensive side, having some offensive success defensively, you know, I guess your secondary continues to to be a positive. Nicky Manwari in the back end is a really bright, shining, true freshman. But, you know, Mark, again, it, it's like you mentioned, you bring up the statistics, and I know it's just two weeks, but – You've surrendered 200 yards rushing week one, 295 in week two, right? Your pass defense ranks 15th in the country. Well, it's just like last year, right? Which is the reason it ranks so high is because nobody has to throw the ball, right? Because you just cannot. I mean, look at Arkansas Saturday. K.J. Jefferson only threw for 162 yards. Mark, he went 18 to 21. I mean, they ran for 295. Why would you put it in harm's way? So you look at this game this weekend against Georgia, and I mean, if Stetson Bennett throws more than 15 passes, Georgia's OC should be fired. You know what I mean? Like, what's the point? Why would you put the ball in harm's way? At least going off of what we know. So um, it's it's a lot of the same deficiencies, a lot of the same issues, and here's the thing. They won seven games with a bowl game with those problems last year. We'll see if they can do it again. Um, but for me, the reason I left Saturday feeling – no more victories, but somewhat positive. I think just seeing this football team have some offensive success, it at least gives you encouraging signs that, you know, there's life in the offense. I, I think we feel like once the matchups get better, Arkansas was a horrid matchup. Once the matchups get better, this defense will do enough to keep us in ball games and, and give us a chance to win. But it, it all comes down to the offense. So to see them have success, that was the big question mark coming in, uh, I, I think did please a lot of Gamecock fans for sure. Talking up South Carolina football, Chris Phillips uh, joined him right there on Twitter. You see his handle right there, the Spurs Up Show and the Daily Crow. That's the lineup, right, Chris? Did yes. I miss anything? <clears throat> yeah, no, so the podcast drops three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts. That's under the name, the Spurs Up Show. The Daily Crow is our daily live show, like you mentioned, that airs noon to two Eastern time. Uh, Monday through Friday, and that airs on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. You can call a number. We have a call-in number that's 843-790-3377. Uh, call the beauties and the banters, we always say. So we discuss, debate, what have you, have great conversation. We have daily guests on all throughout the week as well, uh, You know, ranging from folks like Steven Garcia, folks within the 24-7 Sports Network with South Carolina, J.C. Sherbert. We have guys like uh, you know, Pro Football Focus guys, uh, Jake Crane of Crane and & Company, and also my good friend Alex McGrath, who we'll have on today. So uh, a lot of fun, really, really good stuff. And you can also check that out. The Daily Crow does drop in podcast form every day around 3 o'clock or so on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. And, of course, all over social media, just at the Spurs Up shows where you can find us.